Hello and welcome everybody. This video is going to be an introduction to modular synthesis. I'm going to be going over various types of modules and explain how they interconnect with one another to create sound. The first thing you need to know is that there are different types of modules. Different brands have different size connectors and different power needs. So keep this in mind when you're buying. The brand I use is Eurorack, which seems to be the most affordable overall. They use the same 8th inch plugs or the same size plugs you use for your earbud headphones, except these are unbalanced mono TS cables. So they only have the tip and the sleeve versus TRS tip ring sleeve or balanced cables, which you would normally see on the headphone cable. There are three kinds of modules, source, processor, and logic. Source modules only output a signal. The signal may be heard or may be used to affect another module. Some examples of these are a VCO, or voltage controlled oscillator, an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, or an envelope generator, an EG, which is also like an ADSR, which I'm sure you've seen before with attack decay sustain release. Processor modules have inputs and outputs, so signal passes through them as they affect the signal in their own unique way. Processors may also have control inputs so that sources like an envelope generator or an LFO may alter the parameters on that processor. Examples of these processors are a VCF or a voltage controlled filter, a VCA, voltage controlled amplifier, a mixer, or a sequencer. And logic modules are devices that may function as a clock, trigger, or gate. Note that all modules are not characterized by the module itself but by how the module is used in relation with the other modules that you connect it to. In my current setup, I have a VCO, a VCF and VCA combo, which I just use for a filter, the U-Fold Wave folder, which folds the waves in on itself, a mixer, delay, and an LFO. And I use all of this in conjunction with my Mini Brute. The Mini Brute has gate and pitch out so that I can send it to the modular rack, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. Its sibling, the Micro Brute, also has an envelope generator and an LFO that you can use with your modular device. I'm actually thinking of picking one up soon just because I feel like it would be cheaper to have a gate and pitch out, an envelope generator, and an LFO out all in one with. Uh, with its own oscillator and with its own keyboard and everything else. So now that you know a lot of the background information, let's start plugging things in. I neglected to mention that I also have this in out here, which allows me to send stuff and let it be processed by the modular uh, units and also have the output of the modular units go um, into a quarter inch instead of an eighth inch so that it can be plugged into my interface so that I can record it and use it. So now you see here's the input and the output of the in-out. So let's go plug the output of the in-out. will be plugged into the input of my interface. You can't hear anything right now because there's nothing else plugged into it. Next I will use the VCO. Let me use the saw wave. So I'll plug it from the saw wave output into the input of the in-out. We still don't hear anything because the output is turned down. So let me turn that up. You can also change the waveforms just by plugging it into a different output. You can change the pitch and by octaves. Now let's take the output of uh, the VCO and plug it into the filter. That's the filter input and it even says in and the filter output at the bottom into the input of the in out. Filters all the way down. Let's increase it. You can 
us to change the cue. Now let's take that again. So now I have the output of the filter and I can plug it into the input of, let's say, the U-fold. And I plug the output of the U-fold into the input of the in-out. Now I can modulate this instead of changing it myself by using the LFO. So what, this one's folds. So let's use uh, square wave. So these are labeled tri square. Uh, I'll use this square. And I'll affect the folds. As I change the rate, it gets faster. Change it to triangle. If I don't want it to be so dramatic, I can use the mixer to attenuate the level. So let's plug it into the input of the mixer right here. They each have their own inputs and outs. And there's a master output if you plug all of these into the inputs. So let's just go into that input. And then I'll patch the output of that to the input of the folds. For the LFO, this right here changes the shape of the triangle to be an up and down sawtooth. To a triangle. So that one's kind of slow, so let's use the bottom one because it's a bit faster. And I can also adjust, let's go back to the triangle again. I'll use, uh, I'll use the mixer again. So I'll go into this input. And then from the output of here, I'll go into, let's say, the input of the filter. The filter control CV1. So as I increase this, it will kind of create like a wobble effect. It'll make the filter uh, open up and close. It's really slow. And one last thing I want to do let me unplug some of these other things.
So I'm plugging a lot of the U-fold stuff so that's no longer processing the U-fold. It's still going, the audio is still passing through the U-fold, it's just not being modulated by the LFO any longer. Let's use the delay. So I want to grab the out the master output of what this is connected to the U fold. I'm going to go into the input of the delay, and then I'm going to turn the delay off real quick. Uh, mix out of the delay into the input of the in out. So now, right now, it'll just pass us through because it's off. But as I turn this on. Really cool stuff, right? And that can be modulated too. Turn the volume off. Another cool thing that I like to do, uh, just give me a second, because I have to reach for this. I'm gonna take these cables. I know it's TRS instead of TS, but I don't have a long enough TS cable that reaches. So actually, I'm gonna unplug this stuff. Just gonna yank it all out. Doesn't matter. Well, I'll leave that in. Oops. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to use this CV input for the VCO so that I can control it with the Mini Brute. So basically I'll be able to have a distinct defined pitch instead of just random whatever sounds I make just with this alone. So I'm going to plug that in. And I plugged it into the output of the pitch on the mini brute. Let's bring this down a few octaves. I don't know why it does that. It just decides to go up drastically. Another cool thing I can do is adjust the pitch. So let's take the LFO tri uh, triangle. And I'm going to plug it into the CV2. Oh, there's my cables. I was looking for some of my cables. That's a little bit too drastic, so let's plug it into uh, the mixer instead. So I can get a level. So now I'm playing on the keyboard. But unlike your normal synthesizer, this doesn't have an envelope generator. 
so there's nothing to tell it when to stop playing so it's just going to continue making the sound so usually what I like to do is plug the output into the input of the mini brute that way I can create a really cool sound on the modular gear and then bring it over to the envelope generator uh, and I also have an amplification envelope uh, more LFOs and other effects on the mini brute so I can also uh, add it at this oscillator with the oscillators on the mini brute so that I have uh, a dual oscillator thing going on instead of just a single oscillator that the mini brute or just this has Make sure that you match the pitch before you start recording though, because it's going to be some wonky pitch unless you line it up perfectly. Uh, <laughs> just in case you were wondering, you can output the LFO to the input of the in-out, and you will hear it. So that's pretty cool too. But overall, as far as this video goes, I hope you got the general idea of how a modular rack works. If you have any other questions, just leave a comment below. If you think there's something that I should cover in the next video, let me know so that I can have it ready. And the last thing I want to say is that I do a lot of tutoring and teaching one-on-one -on -one over Skype or Google Hangouts and I'd be glad to teach and help you out with things like Ableton or Synthesis, whether it be uh, software synthesis or hardware. If you have any questions, just uh, ask me about that, send me a message. But anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. It would really help me out if you subscribed and liked this video. But uh, yeah, that's it for this time. So I'll see you guys later.